today we are reviewing fractions. Go ahead and write the objective to understand fractions and page five. All right, well, first things first, make sure you circle this part over whole, put a star by it. It is very important. I'm going to be saying it all year. When in doubt, part over whole. All right, so if I'm looking at a fraction, the numerator is my part and the denominator is my whole or the total. Okay, so if I look at this picture, I have one part that is shaded out of four equal parts. Now, I cannot have something like this. If I had a picture like this and it was in four pieces with one shaded, that is not one fourth because the parts are not equal. So it's really important that you realize the denominator, denominator shows the equal parts and then the numerator shows however many you're talking about. In this case, one out of four. All right, so when you have a fraction, one thing you can do is put it in simplest form. To do that, the easiest way is to find the greatest common factor because that will let you simplify it in one step. Not the only way, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you this first. So first I can start by finding factors of 16. I know one is a factor, so one times 16. I know two goes in because 16 is even. That'd be two times eight. Three is not gonna work because six plus one is seven. So then four, yes. Four times four is 16. And these are consecutive, so I'm, or actually the same number. So I know I don't have to try to hunt for any more. Okay, next I'm gonna do 40. So one times 40. It's even, so two, and that's times 20. Three's not gonna work, because four plus zero is four, and that's not divisible by three. Four will work, four times 10. I know five will work, because it ends in a zero, and that's five times eight. Six and seven are not gonna work, because I know six times seven is 42, and that's too close. So I'm done here. Now, I'm gonna look on both sides. And I'm going to see what they have in common. They both have a 1. They both have a 2. They both have 4. They both have 8. Anything else? No. So the greatest common factor would be 8. So then, to reduce this, the fastest way would be to take 16 over 40 and divide. You're technically dividing by 1 because you're putting 8 over 8. So you're gonna divide the numerator by eight and the denominator by eight, but really it's really not changing the value of the fraction because you're really just dividing by one. So 16 divided by eight, which if you have this chart, all you have to do is look and see what's paired with eight, a two. And 40 divided by eight, well, a five is paired, so five. So this fraction in simplest form would be two fifths. Now, you could also divide by two over two, and then divide by two over two again, and do multiple steps to get to simplest form, but using the greatest common factor allows you to do it in one step. Okay, so go ahead and try this one. Start by finding the factors of 21 and 28, my numerator and denominator. Find the greatest common factor, and divide by that, see what you get. All right. 1 times 21, 2 is not going to work, 3 times 7, just think, is there anything else? Nope, I can't think of anything else. So now to 28, 1 times 28, 2 times 14, 3 is not going to work, 4, yes, I can do 4, that's 4 times 7, 5 is not going to work, 6 not going to work. So I'm done. So again, I look for what they have in common. They both have one, they both have seven, and that's it. So my greatest common factor would be seven because it's the largest. And now I'm going to take my fraction, 21, 28, and divide by seven over seven, or one. 21 divided by seven is three, 28 divided by seven is four. So this fraction in simplest form is three fourths. All right, 
Next, we're going to review how to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. So I do a little trick for this and I call it popcorn. Okay, it's just a little way to help remember what to do. So you're going to start by multiplying the denominator times the whole number. Because remember, this shows the number of equal pieces, so you're trying to find the total pieces in six holes. So four times six, I'm going to write it over here and then I'll show you why I call it popcorn. Four times six is 24. Now besides these six holes, you also have three pieces. So then you're going to add the three. So you have 24 plus three. And then if that's your total pieces, well, how are they cut? They're still cut into fourths. So your answer would be 27 fourths. Now, I call this popcorn, actually Texas popcorn, because what I do is I write T, X, which also looks like the plus and multiplication sign. And then I do popcorn because I start at the bottom and it's gonna look like popcorn. So I start at the denominator, four times six, which is 24, plus three, which is 27, and then put it over the four, 27 over four. And again, it kind of looks like a piece of popcorn. So here's my answer. 27 fourths would be 6 and 3 fourths as an improper fraction. Go ahead and try 4 and 2 ninths and see if you can either use this method or the popcorn, Texas popcorn method, and figure out what it is as improper. <clears throat> All right. Texas. And now I'm going to popcorn. Nine times four, that's 36. Plus two, 38. Over nine. So my answer should be 38 over nine. Now I'm gonna write this down to make sure and check. First I have the denominator times the whole number, nine times four, which is 36. Then I add the numerator, 36 plus 2 is 38. And then that's the total pieces out of each piece is cut into 9 pieces, so 38 over 9. So I did get the same answer. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start with the improper fraction and make it into a mixed number. Well, the way to do this is divide. All right, so I'm gonna start. One way when I'm dividing is to always remember, I call it ice cream cone, that your numerator is like your scoop of ice cream and the cone is like your denominator, okay? So whenever you are eating ice cream, well one, you eat the ice cream part first usually, but when you're putting it in the freezer, and I call your little division bar the freezer, which one wouldn't go in the freezer? Well, the cone doesn't have to go in the freezer, but the ice cream does or it will melt. So this is a little trick just to remember, the ice cream goes in the freezer, so the 17 goes inside or is your dividend. So 17 will go here, and then the three goes on the outside. And now I'm gonna divide. Three does not go into one, so put a zero. Three does go into 17, three, six, nine, 12, 15. So five times I subtract. Remember, you can always use your DMSB. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Okay, now I'm not gonna go any further. I've divided all that I can and I'm left with the remainder. So I'm gonna stop there. And I make a little backwards V to remember how this goes. So I start with my answer, which is five. And then I make a backwards V, five and two thirds. Five and two thirds. Okay, so remember, whatever your answer or quotient is, that's your whole number. And then your remainder is your numerator and it's still out of thirds, the denominator won't change, so that will still be here for your divisor. 
Okay, go ahead and try the next one. Again, ice cream. Twenty-two is my ice cream, and it has to go in the freezer. And the eight will go out here. Now I divide. Eight does not go into two, and it goes into twenty-two twice, which is sixteen. I subtract. Make sure you borrow. Twelve minus six is six. All right. Now, I'm going to do my little backwards V. So two and six eighths, two and six eighths. Now, I'm actually not done because I noticed that six and eight are both even. So I know I can divide by two and I can reduce that fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce. I would just divide by two over two, because two is the greatest common factor here. And that would give me an answer of two, my whole number doesn't change, but six divided by two is three, eight divided by two is four. So simplest form, my answer is two and three fourths. All right, last step, equivalent fractions. We're gonna ignore this part for now and just look here. If I was trying to find the missing number here, well, the thing I have to remember is that with equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do the same thing to the denominator for them to actually be equal, all right? So what I need to do is whatever I'm given, since I know both numerators, I need to figure out how did I get to 15? Well, um, fractions, it's only multiplicative. You can't add or subtract something. You can only multiply or divide to get from one to the other. So since it got bigger, I know I multiplied. So let's see, 5, 10, 15, that's 3. So then this right here to get from there to there would be times 3. Well, if I did times 3 on the top, then I have to do the same thing to my denominator. So this would be times 3. So 6 times 3, that would make x. 18. Now, I put another blank here because I want to show you that you can make another equivalent fraction. In fact, you could make an infinite amount of equivalent fractions. The main thing you have to do is whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do to the denominator. As long as you do the same thing to both numbers, multiplying or dividing, then it'll be equivalent. So, let's say I wanted to do times 2. Now, I could actually do this times 2. I could do this times 2. It doesn't matter as long as I do either both of these or both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the 5. If I wanted to do 5 times 2, that would be 10. Now, since I didn't multiply by 2 here, I have to multiply by 2 again. 6 times 2, well, that's 12. So 5, 6 is the same thing as 15 eighteenths, is the same thing as 10 twelfths. And you could make a ton more. All right, go ahead and see if you can figure out what x is, and then we'll create another equivalent fraction. All right, well, I noticed that I have both denominators, so I first need to figure out how I got from here to here. I notice that it's going down or getting smaller. So that must mean I'm dividing, okay? So what could I divide 20 by and get five? Well, I could divide by four. If I divide by four, that means I have to divide by four here. And eight divided by four is two. So X must be equal to two. Now, again, I'm going to use this same scale factor and find another equivalent fraction. Okay, so I could start with 2 fifths or 8 twentieths, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and start with 2 fifths this time. Well, whatever I do from here to here, I have to do the same thing from here to here. So again, I could do times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 
is 10. So 4 tenths would be equivalent. I could have done this times 2, 16 fortieths, still equivalent. Okay, so as long as you do the same thing to both the numerator and denominator, again, either multiplying or dividing, then your fraction will be equivalent. All right, make sure you go over that and be ready for your quiz, and I'll see you next time.